All righty. So it is one o'clock central time here. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today for our very last Capsum Inbox Pilot Pass webinar for 2021. Uh, we have a very exciting version to share with you today, which I'll speak to in just a moment. But for those of you that may not be aware of our Capsum Inbox Pilot Pass uh, uh, initiative, this is basically a way for us to give you open access to try every single one of these micro simulations. Uh, that way you can see it from the perspective as a student, to see what kind of reporting you get as a professor, and really to see some very immersive and engaging stories brought to you by authors all across the globe. Now, my name, of course, is Matthew Schell. I'm Capstone's Market Development Manager, and I'm also joined today with my colleague, Kelsey Zimmerman, our Learning Experience Coordinator. Kelsey, how are you doing today? I'm great, Matt. Awesome, excellent. And basically what Kelsey and I do is we work with all sorts of authors from both academia as well as in the corporate sphere to bring these custom micro simulations to life like the version we're gonna share with you today. And in fact, uh, we have a very exciting version here. This is Capsum Inbox Healthcare Administration. And I'm excited to have on the call with us Dr. Christopher Harbin, Assistant Teaching Professor of Management at Pennsylvania State Erie, the Brehan College. Chris, how you doing today? Good, Matt, excellent. Fantastic. So what we'll do over the next 30 to 45 minutes or so is we're gonna start by giving a very top level view of what you can expect from the Capsum Inbox Healthcare Administration micro simulation. From there, I'll pass it on to Kelsey, who will actually take you through the student experience, actually showing you some of the emails and situations that you're gonna find in Dr. Harbin's version. And then after that, I'll have a chance to kind of take you through the reporting metrics, what you can expect immediately after students go through this simulation. And then really the latter half of today's conversation is more of a dialogue between Chris and I, you know, kind of think of, think of uh, why he exactly decided to build this simulation, where he sees the key benefits for students, professors. And then of course, at the end of today's uh, session, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. So if you do have any, feel free to submit them in the questions tab here or within the chat, and we'll be sure to get to those. So without further ado, let's get started. So what exactly is Capsum Inbox Healthcare Administration? Well, as mentioned, this is our very newest version of the Capsum Inbox platform. And in fact, we're releasing it right as we speak. And what's interesting about healthcare administration is that all of the simulations we have have always had a, a very business cons, uh, context at its center. But with healthcare administration, we were able to go a little bit beyond that. So while this is very well suited for business management style courses. You're also gonna see a lot of applicability, of course, within the healthcare field. And I'll let Chris himself speak to that in here in a little while. But what happens within the healthcare administration simulation? Well, what happens is that the students take the role of the vice president of operations at Frederick County Health System's newest location, that being Smithville Hospital. And we're looking at evaluating the following skills for students. We wanna see how they do it in terms of delegation, we want to see their leadership capabilities, as well as how effectively they can problem solve and prioritize a variety of different tasks, which we'll speak to as well. Now, in terms of the time commitment, as the name suggests, a micro simulation, a much more abridged experience than your standard simulation. And while we don't have a timer on this version, we do give students as much time as they need to complete it. We are seeing a completion time of roughly 60 minutes on average. Now, in terms of the company profile and the scenario, you're working again at the new Smithville Hospital location, who is a new member to FCHS. And really what the Smithville location is looking to do is increase the awareness of their services to improve their financial position, and while still keeping quality of care as their key focus, but understanding there's gonna be certain areas where they can improve. So all in all with the scenario, you're, the student's gonna be tasked with managing, of course, the operations of the facility and really being the face of this new location. So they're gonna be making decisions on everything from finance related topics to physical aspects of the building, while at the same time interacting with human resources for staffing and training needs, or even responding to client and medical staff concerns. So at this point in time, we've had a quick chance to look at what healthcare administration is gonna entail. We're gonna go through that a little bit more in depth here in just a moment, but at this time, happy to pass it on to Kelsey, who will give you a top level overview of the inbox experience, and then jump right into that demo experience. Kelsey? Great, thanks, Matt. You wanna pass over the screen? There we go, took just a moment. There we go. Great. Are. So, um, 
There are three main parts of the experience that Matt mentioned. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through this actual uh, mini version of the healthcare administration experience. Um, so this first email comes in uh, from the CEO of uh, that Smith Smithville Hospital um, system. Uh, the CEO is sharing the most recent organizational chart and asking the participant to review it. Uh, the participant will reference this document throughout their day um, to gain better understanding of the team structure. Um, the various op uh, responses offered here um, provide varying levels of effectiveness and assess leadership skills. So as you can see, while dealing with this one email, the participant um, has been receiving more emails from various stakeholders. So this is clearly going to be a busy day for the VP. Um, so the CEO reaches out a few times um, to gain uh, some feedback on several hospital metrics. The participant is asked to prioritize areas of improvement and troubleshoot with the team on how to resolve problems presented by the results, the balance scorecard, and other metrics that they have to review in order to make these decisions. Um, so this next email, so these are those two metrics that you're asked to review. You can respond to those. This next email comes from Bruce Campbell, um, who is a registered nurse on the team. Uh, so he's bringing forward a complaint of favoritism within his team, specifically an issue with the nurse manager, Cindy. Uh, he's essentially going up the ladder and trying to resolve the issue himself. Uh, the participant has several um, options on how to res respond, each of which assess for skills like delegation, leadership, prioritization. Um, so let's say for our purposes, the participant decides to schedule with the meeting, a schedule a meeting with Bruce right away. So the nurse is pleased. I uh, get an email uh, and I am immediately, they're pleased to have been acknowledged so directly, um, but perhaps the participant is not showing um, that skill of delegation. So by making this choice, the participant gets a email from Grant, the CEO, warning the participant about jumping the chain of command and not delegating to the team. He lets the participant know that by doing so, he may be missing some important information regarding this particular issue. So that is a quick um, little sneak peek into what types of situations the participant will experience throughout the simulation. This is just one of, uh, these are just a few of the storylines um, within the inbox. There's several more parallel uh, and supporting storylines of each, um, which contribute in creating that very realistic experience for the participant. Uh, and it really assesses their reactions uh, to other relevant issues within the healthcare administration. So from here, I'm gonna pass it back to Matt. Um, who will provide a little bit more detail on the feedback report and the information we share with the participant on their overall performance. Matt? Absolutely. Thank you, Kelsey. And in fact, while we're actually on the screen here, uh, Kelsey did a great, excellent job of kind of describing some of the situations that you're going to be in. But let's take a look at the user interface as well. Because really, with, with Inbox, we wanted to make something that was very practical, experiential, but also relatable for students. And really, that's why we picked the format of going with a simulated email inbox, because it's something that we all, virtually all of us anyway, interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you spend more time on actually the, the scenarios and the situations that you're trying to respond to, as opposed to how do we actually use the tool. And you can see we kind of took that minimalist approach to the outlooks and Gmails we use on a day-to-day -day basis. We're on the left side of the screen, you'll of course have your list of the inbox emails. You can click sent items if you want to go back and look at any of the previous responses you've hit on. And at the same time, you'll have your company drive right below that, which will have a variety of supporting information. Everything from, in this case, census data and organizational charts that can help you kind of prioritize. You know, do I respond to, you know, Grant Zuber, the CEO, before I say respond to an administrative assistant or so on. Um, but at the same time, as Kelsey had shown, you can also see direct attachments to the emails themselves. So just a kind of a quick overview of the interface there. At this time, I'll go ahead and pull the screen back here. And I just want to briefly speak uh, a little bit to the experience prior, now that we've seen the inbox simulation. Because we want to make onboarding as straightforward and as easy as possible when utilizing the sim. So what we have is just a brief five minute onboarding uh, segment where we do two things. We speak to uh, 
their own self-awareness. So we'll actually ask students, you know, relative to your peers, where do you place yourself on a scale like delegation on a scale of zero to 99? Well, I think I'm about average, I'll put myself at 50. And then the same, so on and so forth for leadership and the other skills. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to get a little bit of uh, perceived skill levels from the students, which we then directly compare to the simulation, which I'll speak to in just a moment. And at the same time during that five minute onboarding, that's where we provide that role information in the scenario, scenario uh, that we've been discussing. That way they've got all the context they need to jump into the simulation itself. And again, all that information will still be available through say the company drive, for instance. But after they go through the simulated experience, they are prompted to exit the simulation. And what's great about Capsum Inbox is that we're able to provide both individual and instantaneous feedback. So in this case, what we're able to do is show them four key metrics. We can show their overall performance by percentile by comparing how well they did in healthcare administration against the hundreds of other students at this point in time that have gone through the sim. We also provide them the developmental index. And really what this is speaking to is, did they pick the most effective or the most proficient responses uh, to the emails? And then how consistent was that proficiency throughout the exercise? And then of course, comparing that self-reported information that they assess that they're in the onboarding to the simulation, we give them two main gauges of feedback. We give them self-awareness level gauge on a scale of zero to six, where a higher score would indicate that their perceived skills are very much close to reality, and where lower scores could be a bit of a reality check that they may be under or overestimating their current capabilities. But by far the most important information that we provide through Capsum Inbox is gonna be a skill gap analysis that you see on the right side of the screen here. So for example, we actually visualize where do they self-assess? Where do the inbox simulation place them at? So that way we can visualize not only their key strengths, but also where these individuals have some room for improvement. And for a lot of simulations, this is kind of where it stops. You know, they kind of get their the snapshot of where their skills are at, and then that's it. But what we have in healthcare administration, in addition to the other inbox versions available, is the ability for students to break an individual development plan. And what we do is we work with authors like Dr. Harbin to create developmental tactics. And they use that as the foundation to create actionable goals on how they want to improve their skills moving forward. So they'll actually set a quantitative goal, such as I want to improve my delegation skill by 10% by this date. And then here's the exact action items I'm going to take to try to be successful in that. Now, how do you evaluate that? How do you see how effective they were? Well, I'll show you when we look at the admin dashboards that you are able to access those IDPs of students. And then in terms of assessing how well their efforts uh, really turned out, you can implement this in a pre-test, post-test scenario. So for example, say you wanted to have all of your students go through this simulation at the beginning of a course to assess where their knowledge is currently at. And then you wanna do at the end of the course to see how much more knowledge they acquired during that time. Well, you can indeed do that. And what you'll be uh, shown is the empirical longitudinal development of skills between that first and second implementation. So there may be a net change in say plus five with their leadership capabilities and so on and so forth. But now speaking a little bit to the admin side after we've kind of gone through a quick crash course in the student experience. Well, we wanted to make sure that for administrators, professors, that it was just as intuitive, just as user-friendly to access the results of the simulation as it is for students to experience it. So what you'll see here is just a sample dashboard of Capsum Inbox. So you log in at capsum.com, go through your professor portal page, then go to your exact course for your, that section. And then you simply can see at the top here that you'll have a dashboard with the class averages at the top. So how well did the entire group do against the general populace in terms of percentile? And at the same time, we'll give you averages of the different skill scores. That way you can identify, you know, is there any, you know, overarching strengths in the course, or maybe perhaps this is a good place to make some inferences about where you might want to spend more focus in the future, for example. And then on the bottom of the page is where you'll see the individual course roster where you can see each student easily searchable, everything from their overall score to their self-awareness level, when did they complete the inbox simulation, how long did it take them, and of course, having access to that individual development plan, which you can view and provide feedback on. So all in all, very easy experience. All of this is easily exported via CSV file if you wanna open it up in Excel. And in fact, depending on what LMS system you have at your institution, we can also do direct integration with that system that way for single sign-on and to port that information over to you directly. So 
now that we've taken a look at the healthcare administration version at, at a top level, we've had a chance to look at the student experience and just briefly highlight a bit of the professor side. I'd like to introduce you all to the man of the hour, Dr. Christopher Harbin. Uh, Chris, of course, I've had a, a great time working with him over the last year or two working on this simulation as well as some other projects. Uh, basically, with, with our experience with Chris goes back several years. He's been one of our, uh, our CAPSIM advocates, uses our platform simulations for almost a decade now. And Chris is the assistant teaching professor of management at Pennsylvania State Erie's uh, Bre uh, Barrens College. He's also the associate director and touty chair of entrepreneurship and family business at the Center of Family Business. And he has a variety of research focuses, everything from small business strategy to organizational leadership, all the way through international trade. And he also has previous teaching experience at Bowling Green State and Lourdes University as well. He got his doctorate in strategic leadership and leadership coaching at Regent University a dual concentrated MBA for organizational leadership and international business at the University of Findlay, and his bachelor's of mass media communication at the University of Akron. So Dr. Chris Harbin, how are you doing today? Good to reconnect with you here. Excellent, Mac, thank you. Fantastic. So what I thought I would do really quickly, Chris, is I want to kind of just give a quick recap of the scenario and the skills that we're looking at here. And then from there, I had a couple of questions for you. Sound good? Sure. Fantastic. So again, what we're looking at in terms of the scenario for healthcare administration is that students are taking a day in the life experience of the VP of operations at Frederick County Health System's new Smithville Hospital location. They're gonna be both managing operations as well as being the face of this new location and making a variety of different managerial decisions related to everything from budgeting to staffing to client concerns and even evaluating some new diagnostic systems at Smithville. And what I think is really a key strength with healthcare administration is that you're incorporating both managerial decision-making with cross-functional decision-making due to the different characters you're interacting with, all being set in a very immersive healthcare atmosphere. And the final thing I wanna hit on again in terms of the skills we're looking to evaluate here is delegation, leadership, problem solving, and prioritization. So at this point, Chris, I'd love to just ask you more of a general question. You know. When it comes to a healthcare administration simulation, was there a particular goal or need that you had in mind while you were developing this? Yeah, in terms of a need, um, I've seen this need increase ever since the passing of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, so prior to the Affordable Care Act, hospitals would get involved in customer satisfaction surveys for people in the business, they would know them as HCAPs, the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Procedures and systems is basically a survey that patients will get at the end of a stay in a hospital and it's always been good for hospitals to look at that and they would manage improvements or you know services that they were offered and processes but it wasn't until ACA came along that those survey results were directly related to the bottom line because depending on how you did on those surveys impacted how much of a reimbursement you would get back from the government from Medicaid and Medicare. So it became more critical for healthcare systems to be better at running the business side, not just the patient care side, but they had to be better at running the business side. It's always been a very, ah, you know, margins were very, very thin or very, very close. There was no margin for error on the patient care side, but now the business side also had low margins for error because there was low profit margins. And that was primarily why I got interested in, in this because there is, after all, I mean, running a healthcare system is a business. It's probably a more intense business than people would experience if they were working in a manufacturing facility, just because of some of the emotional things they've got to deal with, the contextual part of, of working within healthcare. So that's primarily why I was interested in this. Excellent. Well, thank you for that, Chris. And that, in fact, that's a, a great kind of segue into my next question here. You talk about how the ACA kind of impacted how you created the sim. Could you give us a little insight into how you exactly crafted the simulation content, the, the scenarios themselves? Was this based primarily on your own experiences? Uh, yes, and others. So I worked as a consultant within a healthcare system for some time and um, developed excellent relationships with C-level managers, CEOs, COOs, um, mid managers as well. And so a lot of the scenarios that I wrote for the sim came either from things I actually saw that 
the managers I was coaching were dealing with, or they were um, scenarios that were shared with me when I reached out and talked to people. Many of the people that were at the hospital that I was consulting with went off and became CEOs at other hospitals. So I leveraged as many real life scenarios as I possibly could. So these are all, all of these are based on real life things. Absolutely. And I'd say that certainly comes true, uh, having gone through it several times now. Excellent in terms of its immersion and just the level of detail, everything from like, you know, the different financial statements we look at, you know, to be able to make some key decisions on um, down to evaluating like the Da Vinci machine. That's a focus right. as well. Yeah, um, I think. And one of the yeah. things that's important for this is that, you know, you mentioned the Da Vinci machine. So if you're working in a different environment, let's say you're deciding to you know, make a capital purchase in a manufacturing environment, that's fundamentally the same thing as deciding whether or not we're going to put a Da Vinci robot in one of our hospital buildings. However, the context is, is much different. So the pressure on the person, especially a non-medical business person working within a healthcare system can feel a pressure um, that their equivalents outside of healthcare don't feel. And I think that's one of the benefits of, for this simulation as well. Fantastic. Uh, let me ask you this, Chris. I mean, in terms of like direct benefits with healthcare administration from both the student and the professor's perspective, is there anything that, that kind of comes out to you as top of mind with this type of experience? So when you have someone that doesn't have medical who's not a medical professional, right? There and, and there's a lot of people that are in hospital administration. People that know hospital administration know that administrators come from all kinds of different backgrounds. They can come from a finance or accounting background. They can come from a, just a management background. However, the, the stakeholders you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis as one of these non-medical business people in the healthcare environment, the stakeholders are looking at you and determining whether or not you're going to have the credibility to help lead them. And some of these stakeholders can be very, very difficult. Um, they could be physicians and surgeons. They could be nurses. They could be uh, members of the finance staff. They could be members of the uh, facilities staff, um, you know, hospital hospitality staff. So you have many different demographics within the employees at the hospital that this person is going to have to deal with. So it really, really becomes a leadership um, skill set that they have to develop. You know, who are the people that you're going to lean on to make these decisions? Who are these people that, who are the people within the hospital that are you going to have to build alliances with so that you can make the best decisions you can? And, and then when you have to make the tough decision that's going to be maybe unpopular with some groups, did you do a good enough job building some respect and adding some credibility so you can make those kind of decisions? I think that's probably the the critical part of this. This gives participants the ability to experiment and 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 experience that without without getting a black eye, you know, without having to be out in, in the real world. Uh, this also will open their eyes and say, hmm, maybe I need to work on this more before I go out and work in this role. I mean, that, that I think is one of the greatest things about this. It's a safe opportunity to try. Mm, yeah, controlled environment for sure. Absolutely. Uh, as, as uh, another question for you here, Chris, um, you know, I'm sure that the members of the audience are they're probably already thinking about a couple of courses this would be applicable in, but do you have any uh, on, on your mind that perhaps it's best suited for, and then also maybe a couple of people aren't thinking of off the top of their head? Well, the obvious, the low-hanging fruit is healthcare administration type courses. So there are undergraduate programs in healthcare administration. I think this would be excellent for upper class level um, undergrad uh, healthcare administration courses. There's a number of MBA programs that have a healthcare administration concentration. And there's, of course, the Masters of Healthcare Administration. This suits really well graduate level and upper class undergrad level students. And, and it, like I said, that's the low hanging fruit when you have a healthcare administration. I could even, I teach strategy. I'm primarily a strategy professor. I could probably use this in my own class because one of the benefits of doing this is the, the skills that we're testing here apply to really any kind of business management. But the great part of this is because of the context because of the stresses that are put on the participant as part of this inbox, you get to test people and see how they perform under duress. 
right? You think about this, an athlete doesn't train for a race by running slower and taking it easy on themselves. They train harder than they actually intend, anticipate the race to be. The you know football teams will hit harder or hit the weights heavier in anticipation of of this of the actual game. This is one of those things where I think because of the the scenarios related to healthcare administration, you could apply this in a business management course and it'd be very effective. You know, and plus it, it opens up the horizons for a typical business management student because a lot of times if you have a business management student who's not thinking about healthcare, they eliminate healthcare as as a potential career opportunity because well they think I got to be I got to be in healthcare I have to be you know a nurse or have some medical background you don't you will be taught the language you'll learn the language but this this sim might open up those opportunities to to again test those skills that we're testing for under duress in an unfamiliar environment, which really puts students outside their comfort zone. And when you put someone outside their comfort zone, that's when you start to get real growth. Excellent. Appreciate that, Chris. Well, I, one of the things I want to hit on too, in terms of what we what we worked on to really kind of flesh out this version after they go through the simulation was going to be like the supporting documentation, you know, developmental tactics a bit more, and then like the the actual debrief guide that you created. Uh, before I do that, though, because I'd love to get your thoughts on that as well. Is there anything else that you'd like to add at this time before we we talk a little bit more about the supporting side of things? Well, I think you and I talked once about whether or not this could be used internationally, and I think um, it's it's. It's important to note that this is based on a critical access hospital scenario that is unique to the United States. Um, and there's really only one scenario that that would apply to. So if you're thinking about using this as a uh, internationally, there would only be one scenario that might trip you up because it's unique to the United States. So that's something to, something to consider. But I, would, I, would, I wouldn't hesitate. The rest of the scenarios I think would still apply. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely second that. I think everything, the, everything with the exception of the the one thing that you mentioned, was totally applicable. So, fantastic. Well, one thing I did want to make sure we hit on too, Chris, is that you know a lot of times we get questions on the inbox, like, okay, we, they go through this engaging, immersive experience, but like, what's the next step from there? And you know, we hit on a little bit of the individual development plan builder and whatnot. But one thing I did want to highlight with your version in particular is. Um, very effective developmental tactics. You really provide an excellent job of providing the foundation for them to create those action plans. But what you did was you went a step further as well with the the notes to instructor or for instructors, where essentially you took you take the professor through the different scenarios. Um, what was in your mind when creating these? What are things students would be considering? And really, this would be more of like the basis for like a post simulation discussion. Any any thoughts on your side on how you created those, or what you would, what you hope that they deliver for professors and students? Well, a couple of things. I thought about how I teach cases in my classroom, and also how did I learn most when I was a student, and I'm still really a student. I mean, um, and I had to kind of be immersed in the scenario. So with having de de the developmental tactics and the notes available, I envision this would be a great kind of small group discussion focus or a one-on-one -on -one discussion with the professor. So you could use this, let's say for example, you assign, um, senior level at undergrads to, to do this simulation, you know, halfway through the semester, midway through the semester. And you would assign them to come up with their own uh, strategies to deal with the de developmental tactics. How would you deal with the results? And then you can open it up at, in terms of a consultative discussion between the students and the professor to really add growth. I mean, one of the things that I think is is growing in importance is this whole notion of learning by doing. Um, higher ed does a great job imparting wisdom and imparting knowledge and what we don't do a great job all the time. I mean, we're always looking for better ways of doing this is how do we get that experiential part? So the simulation itself is experiential, but then the debrief, the after, is where a really good professor can can draw out students' thoughts even more. I think it's important not just to let the student decide on their own, because you know a lot of times students don't know what they don't know, but ostensibly the professor is supposed to be able to help them. What about this? What about this? Have you thought about this? And that's why I provide both of these things to professors, because they can look at this and have that help jump 
start their own thoughts as they debrief students, as they process this with students. I envision this being not just a learning process for individual students, but also a learning process for the other students from, you know, learning from students and learning from the professor and the professor learning from the students. I mean, there may be scenarios where the student says, well, what about this? And the professor said, wow, that's something I hadn't thought of. That's really a great thought. And then it leads to a great discussion. So you know, one of the things I just love about simulations is it gives you the opportunity to operate in the real world. Uh, like we said, without without fear of actual any pain, but it then opens up that discussion to take the learning to the next level. And I think that's always what we're trying to do. We're always looking for ways to take students beyond the textbook, beyond the PowerPoint. Uh, and, and, and professors that are looking for these kind of things, this is an opportunity to to do that, but also break up the semester too. I mean, you think about, you know, a 15, 16 week semester can be a long time. And the more energy you can keep in that classroom for those 15, 16 weeks, the more learning is gonna actually happen. So I, I don't know if that was a rambling response, but I kind of get a little bit passionate about this and about you know, that's one of the reasons we created it. Yeah, no, absolutely, Chris. And in fact, I mean, it's actually a good point to bring in, you know, how we actually review this thing. How do we actually get feedback on this as we're developing it? I mean, with any version of, of CAPS Min Box, including healthcare administration, you know, we put this through a variety of subject matter expert reviews by experts across the country. Uh, in addition to having, of course, hundreds of students from around the country going through it as well. And in fact, to Chris's point, some of the best feedback we get is from the prof professor side being these sort of supporting documents really help them, you know, make those teaching moments after they go through the simulation. But at the same time, uh, Chris brings up a good point about engagement. I mean, the responses we get from students, you know, was it was it fun? Was it engaging? Was it immersive? Uh, was it different than anything you've tried before? All high marks in those regards. I mean, they really don't ever see anything like this because it's about as close as you can get to say job shadowing, for instance, to give them it, you know some insight into these scenarios. Um, and not to say that everybody's going to start off with being with a VP position, but what it does is it gives you the exposure to the wide variety of situations that one's going to experience in that area. Right. And actually, on that point of feedback, I mean, the good news is, you know, like with it, with any uh, inbox as well as healthcare administration, I mean, we get a lot of great feedback from, of course, students that are currently using it, people that have gone through and tested it. But at the same time, I mean, it's been able to help us out by getting a lot of validation from other parties as well. Uh, in fact, very happy to say that just over the last two years or so, uh, CAPS and Inbox and, of course, healthcare administration under that banner has received a variety of different accolades. Uh, in fact, you know, in 2020, we picked up a variety of EdTech awards on everything from the Trendsetter for best service or product setting a trend for the workforce, as well as best professional skills solution. And this year, we're happy to also get one for best corporate training solution as well. And I'm sure that we're going to, in, in all due time, we're going to see a lot of applications of healthcare admin in the corporate sphere too. But at the same time, even some nice accolades from Brandon Hall Group, for instance, being recognized for the best advanced in gaming or simulation technology. Or take, for instance, the very authoring platform, appropriately named the Caps and Minbox authoring platform, that Chris used to create this version, was chosen as the best advance in content authoring technology. So if any of you out there would like to ever create your own version, feel free to let us know. We'd be happy to have that discussion with you. But as we come towards the close of today's presentation, of course, we want to make sure that we get your feedback on this as well. And that's really the whole point of the pilot pass is that we want to give you unfettered access to this for both you and your students to be able to see is it a good fit not just for your course and the content that you teach within or the, uh, the concepts of your course but also your particular teaching style so if you'd like to reach out to us what we can do for you is everything from giving you a one-on-one -on -one walkthrough of the version but also giving you full demo access to the student experience that way you can see everything start to finish from onboarding to the sim itself to the uh, post simulation activities that we had been mentioning and we'll actually provide with the recording of today's session this very uh, a pdf of today's presentation deck that we can click on that hyperlink on screen and instantly create an account to try it yourself and if by chance you do still have some students that would like to try this with access you know post semester or not happy to give them access to that way you can get some feedback from them as well and of course, if you do have any questions, feel free to contact Kelsey or I directly. And then actually Dr. Harbin was kind enough to provide his uh, email as well if you'd like to talk with him more directly about some of the content within the simulation. But at this time, what I'd like to do is open it up for any questions that we have. I do know we have one or two here ready to go uh, that were submitted earlier in today's session. But if you do have any at this time, feel free to submit those now and we'll go ahead and start responding to some of those. 
So let's see here. So first thing first, Chris, uh, I know you hit on this a little bit, but I guess uh, more directly how you would use it. How would you use this directly in your class? Where would you put it in terms of like the semester at length? You know, I thought about this a couple of different ways. Um, I think I would, if it's, if I was using it in a strategy class or even a senior level healthcare administration class, I would want to have enough of the semester left so that the lessons learned could be revisited throughout the rest of the semester. So I don't want this, I wouldn't want to use it at the end because I think there's too much of an opportunity to create a conversation and then revisit that conversation. So at least mid, no later really than midpoint in the semester. Again, so you, you know, up to that point, you've had opportunities to maybe talk about leadership skills or you've talked about maybe the environment management techniques and those type of things. And then you put the students in this scenario, you throw them in the water, throw them in the deep end, and then you get them out. Now you have the rest of the semester be revisiting the experiences they had in that. And when you have a lecture that might cover leadership, organizational design within the healthcare environment or business development or capital improvements, you know, the growing need for technology in the healthcare world, it makes it really nice to be able to refer back to the sim and to their experience. And that way the students connect more to it. So that's where I'm thinking, middle of the semester. Fantastic. And, and uh, kind of a, a follow-up question to that, Chris, uh, any thoughts on grading this? Uh, any, any any particular thoughts on actually assessing students on their performance by chance? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things again there. I mean, for me, I would use this as a case. So I might grade the students on their own self-assessment of their uh, of their performance after taking this the sim. So you can have them write up a document where they're basically their own consultant saying, okay, first section might be, here's how I assessed myself before the sim. Uh, here's some of the challenges that I experienced throughout the sim, things that I thought I did well, things I didn't think I did well, and then with uh, with their own kind of assessment of what they would want to do to improve. So it wouldn't be that I would necessarily grade them on the sim, it's just the experience from using the sim would provide me the opportunity for them to write up a document that I would grade, and the grading would come on really how how... I mean, really, it comes into an emotional intelligence argument too. How much, how how much did you learn about yourself? Uh, were you accurate about your own perception of your skill sets before taking this? Are you honest with yourself relative to the skill sets after this? Is this now an environment that you can see yourself working in, or are you needing to spend more time preparing to work in that environment? So I think that's for me. That's that would be the approach I would do with regard to grading. Um, the sim. Yeah. Uh, that, that is excellent, uh, Chris. And in fact, that's that's something we hear very commonly across a variety of our, the other inbox versions that are implemented in the classroom. Um, you know, kind of really making it more about that experience and almost like a, like you had mentioned at the beginning of that live case study kind of format. So right, right. I, I, I mean, it's, again, it's, it's an opportunity for students to actually do something. And students, you know, my my students tell me all the time: the more we can actually do live stuff in the classroom, the, the better they are, the better the attendance is, the better the participation level is, the better the grades get, you know, because they have a lot more interest. Yeah, absolutely. And what I, what I do have here, Chris, a, a, as a, an additional question is, uh, we have a member of the audience that was asking if you would plan on developing a full series of healthcare admin micro sims integrated all throughout undergrad and graduate programs in the list of variety of different topics. Now, what I will say is a lot of these topics uh, that I'll, I'll mention a couple of them, I know that we definitely hit on within this version. But I think the beauty of Inbox is that should we ever say want to add additional, you know, topics or subjects to it, very easy for us to do. Uh, topics like, you know, operations management definitely has a focus mm -hmm. within this version. Mm -hmm. Healthcare economics and policy, finance, biostats, population and community health management, organizational right. behavior, HRM, and so on. So just, I guess, more generally for you, I mean, any of those particular topics you wanted to make sure you highlighted for today's session, and then anywhere that you might see in the future, you might want to add on to, or maybe incorporate at a later time. Well, a lot of those specialization areas um, operate well on their own without having to have a, they don't really change with a healthcare context. So for example, accounting. If you're working in the accounting department of, uh, of a hospital system, really isn't a whole lot of differences. I mean, there are different regulations, but there's regulations no matter what you're doing. If you're in an international company, you've got to deal with different regulations. Maybe you have to know 
IFRS instead of GAAP. And my accounting uh, friends out there will know what I'm talking about. Um, but if I think about things that were, where the healthcare context, the overlay of the healthcare context does apply, you know, perhaps operations management, we could develop something specific to operations management because there, especially in the U.S., you've got to be concerned about what can you do with regard to locations, um, the types of facilities you can develop. Um, it leads into strategic management in terms of uh, developing business lines. What's the best business line I should be adding? Uh, do I scale back business lines? Uh, managing a multi uh, multi uh, hospital system. I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways we can go. I think a lot of the existing inboxes though apply to a lot of the areas of healthcare administration already. Uh, I, I don't know if that answered the question, but I mean, I can see there's a lot of places we can go. We can do a version 2.0, so you got promoted to the CEO. Mm -hmm. There you go, there you go. A nice, a nice sequel set, set in the same shared universe, right? <laughs> Right, right. There we or go. you were demoted. I don't know. You're now, you're now in the, you know, <laughs> entry level position per se. There you go. Well, hey, Chris, I, I appreciate your time today. I do have one final question for you uh, before we wrap. Um, if you wanted everyone to take away one thing from either Caps and Inbox generally or the healthcare administration version specifically, of course, what would you say that would be? Oh gosh, and, and it really is a um, a theme that I've carried throughout our conversation today is just the experience. I mean. You know the the overlay of the healthcare administration in this in this simbo, uh, this inbox simulation um, creates a unique set of stressors that I think are going to be important for people that want to work in healthcare administration, and for people that are that never thought about it, and you want to test for their ability to be good managers. And I think this kind of experience, um, I don't think this is a commodity anymore. I think this type of thing should be an expectation in higher education. I don't think that you could really do a good job in higher ed without this kind of experience in the classroom anymore. So that, that would be my commentary on that. Yeah, well, very, very well said there, Chris. Um, that does bring us to the conclusion of today's Pilot Pass webinar focused on Caps and Inbox Healthcare Administration. Again, we'll be happy to send the recording out of today's session along with uh, the PDF version of today's deck. Feel free to let us know if you'd like access. I'll be happy to provide it to you instantaneously. And if you have any questions for myself, Kelsey, or Dr. Harbin, you can let us know as well. But I would like to thank my colleague, Kelsey, for taking us through the a quick demo of the version. And then I'd like to give a very big thanks to Dr. Christopher Harbin for his time today to kind of speak to his mindset into creating this uh, micro simulation. And of course, as a final thank you to all of you who joined us today for today's session. So I hope you all have a great day and we'll talk to you all soon. Take it easy, everybody. Thank you, Matt and Kelsey.